All right, we are back on the dyno today with our Ninja 500, and this time we actually have a full spark exhaust without a baffle in that muffler, and it kind of performed pretty much exactly how I expected to, which is not great. So we had the full M4 with the baffle in on this bike previously with the TST Velocity stacks and DNA air filter, which the DNA air filter is nothing, but it's in there, so whatever. And we have that mapping already flashed into the ECU. So when we went ahead and put on the full spark system and I did a couple quick baselines, I was both shocked at the air fuel ratios that I was seeing and at the same time, not really that surprised. Here's our nice hot baseline before any tuning for the full spark system. Again, this was ECU mapping for the full M4 system in the TST stacks and that M4 muffler has a big old baffle in it. And as you can see, it got real lean real fast above 7,000 RPMs. Around 8,000 RPMs actually, it is stupid lean but the bike kind of just didn't care. There wasn't any, you know, big, like, misses or anything like that going on. It was just running really hot and really pissed off. So, obviously, we went through our normal tuning process and corrected all the fuel tables, and here's the results. It took insanely more fuel than the full M4 of the baffle in, and didn't really pick up much more power. It's making 54 and a half ponies to the tire on pump gas. And if I was any good at video editing, this would be where I would insert the little cricket noise, because... That sucks. Uh, 54 horsepower with that much more fuel in the system. It's just not a good setup. And a lot of folks are going to ask, why is that? Well, as we found on the Ninja 300s, the Ninja 400s, all these smaller displacement bikes, bigger is not always better when it comes to exhaust. This big bastard has roughly the same outlet that we would use on something like, mm, gosh, I don't know, a nearly 200 horsepower ZX10. And this collector diameter is fucking enormous. And what happens is the exhaust pulse velocity goes to hell because, yes, it needs a bunch more fuel to keep the air fuel ratio happy. But what happens is a lot of that energy that is actually normally spent pushing the exhaust pulses out the pipe is now just wasted on expansion. And you end up with the exhaust gas effectively stalling in the pipe because it's just too freaking large. Now, I'll go ahead and show something I normally don't show to most folks, and it is one of the fuel tables. It's actually technically a fuel delta table, because it shows a comparison of the TPS versus RPM fuel table that is necessary for the full M4, the baffle and the TST stacks, and those same TST stacks with this full spark system. And you can see for yourself just how massively inefficient having a muffler and a collector this large on one of these small displacement Kawasaki's really is. Okay, so this is the delta table, and what you're seeing there on the left-hand side is RPM, and the x-axis going this way is throttle percentage. You can see way out here at wide open throttle, if I can get my finger in the camera there, you are talking about 29% more fuel at 8,800 RPMs at wide open throttle for the full spark system versus the M4 with the baffle in. So if I go ahead and highlight that same area on the comparison graph, the blue line being the full M4 with the baffle in and the TSD stacks, and the red being the same setup but with the spark exhaust system installed, that's 29% more fuel for about three horsepower less. So not only is an exhaust that open going to A, not create nearly as much horsepower as one of the baffled systems on these bikes, it's also massively less efficient. A 29% fuel change is huge. If you want to talk about potentially losing some fuel economy, that'll fucking do it for you. So if you want an exhaust system this ridiculously open and large for this bike, then yeah, I've got you covered. I've got mapping built for that. However, I don't recommend it. You do need something with a baffle in these little displacement cowies, just like you did in the 400s and just like you did in the 300s. Now, in the last video that we did when we were talking about having the full M4, the baffle and the TST stacks, that whole thing, we alluded to a kind of critical flaw on these bikes that we identified and had to resolve before we could push any further. And that critical flaw is the clutch, which was already a shit design in the Ninja 400s, and Kawasaki, in their infinite wisdom, didn't bother upgrading it for the 500. So they took a bike that already had a pretty weak clutch, and then they gave it a bunch more torque, and just left the same clutch in it. It's fucking stupid. And the reason we were able to identify this is when we had this thing on the dyno building other exhaust maps, as you can see, this is not anything with the stacks, it just falls flat. Uh, we were getting this crap right there at peak torque, and you can see that has nothing to do with feeling. It's perfect. That is the clutch getting hot and slipping with less than 300 miles on the bike. So, what we did to resolve that issue is call up our friend Greg Spears over at Spears Racing and said, Hey, 
said, I don't think Kawasaki upgraded the clutch for the 500. Can you send us over one of your clutch kits for the 400? So he did, and it works great. We have abused the shit out of this thing now, even with my 240 pound, six foot nine ass on it, doing pull after pull after pull, even on the road, just to make sure this thing doesn't slip, and it does not. So I can guarantee that if in six gear at wide open throttle at, I don't even know what speed I was going near the top of six gear with my ass on it, this thing ain't gonna slip with you on it either. So a big thank you over to Greg Spears and the guys at Spears Racing for sending that to us. We greatly appreciate it. If you're looking to upgrade your clutch and you'll probably need to if you're gonna be racing one of these things on your Ninja 500, head over to spearsracing.com, pick up one of their clutch upgrade kits, the Ninja 400. I'm sure he'll have it listed for the 500 as well very shortly. And that's all I've got time for today because there's 60 bikes outside that door right over there that I have to get back to tuning. So if you have any questions about getting your Ninja 500 properly tuned or dialed in, do not hesitate to send us an email at support at tooldownworks.com because we are always happy to help. Our ECU flash is on our website for these bikes for $349.99 and we always flash and ship out ECUs the same day we receive them to minimize your downtime. And you've got a bunch of options to pick from during checkout on our website for return shipping. So once again, if you're looking to get your ECU properly flashed and tuned for your specific intake and exhaust combination for your new Ninja 500, look no further than tooldynaworks.com. I guarantee you will not find higher quality custom mapping for your specific setup anywhere else.